today we're going to be creating the auto clicker and click buttons that you see at the bottom of our screen. As always, if you guys do enjoy the video or it does help you out, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified when we upload more Roblox development content. Additionally, I have a Patreon. If you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I make during this episode, there's a link down below in the description, and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, let's get into it. So, hopping directly into Studio, the first thing we're going to start off with is creating the GUI. So, going inside of the start GUI, we can add a brand new screen GUI to this, and we'll rename this to Click Buttons. Now, we also want to adjust some properties on here, so we want to set Ignore GUI, Inset the True, and we also want to set Reset on Spawn the False as well. Next, we'll add a frame to the GUI. We then want to adjust the sizing of the frame to be about 0.25 on the X scaled and then 0.15 on the Y scaled. Then, for the position and the anchor point, we want to set the anchor point X to 0.5 and the position X to 0.5 as well, so that it's centered perfectly on the screen. And then for the Y, we want to set this to a 0.85. Now, as we can see, this is appearing directly on the bottom. There's not a space or a gap between the bottom of the screen and this GUI. If we wanted to add a little bit of a space, rather than setting the position to 0.85, we could set it to 0.84, and now there will be a little spacing between the frame and the bottom of the screen. Now that we have that frame, let's go ahead and set the background transparency of this to like 0.75 so that we can still kind of see it, but we don't see it too much. Then we're going to add a UI list layout to this so that we can easily position multiple GUI elements. Then inside of the frame, we're going to add an image button. Now for the actual image itself, we're going to go inside of the currency GUI, inside of the frame, inside of the clicks, and inside of here, we have this image label right here, which is for the actual click currency. So we're going to copy this image label right here, and then we will set the image of the image button that we just created to that image as well. Now for the sizing of this image button, let's actually set the X to 0.3 and the Y to 0.8, just like that. Now because we're using the UI list layout, we don't actually have to worry about the positioning. What we also want to do is inside of this image button, we actually want to add a UI corner to this, and then we can adjust this a little bit. We'll just make this 0.1 for now because I think that does look rounded enough. Additionally, we're going to add a UI stroke to this as well. Now before we adjust the UI stroke, let's actually set the background color of this image button. So we're going to set it to that nice little red right there. And then for the UI stroke, let's go ahead and grab the color. So we're going to grab that red right there. And then we're just going to make it a little bit darker. Then let's go ahead and increase the thickness so that we can actually see it. And now we can actually see the stroke. So you guys can obviously adjust the thickness to however much you want it. For us, we'll just leave it at three for right now. Then what we're also going to do is add a text label inside of the image button as well. And we're going to rename this to label. Now for the sizing of this label, we want it to scale the entire X axis. And then for the Y, we want it to be about 0.5. So half of the Y. Then for the positioning, we want to make sure that we set the X anchor point to 0.5 as well as the X position to 0.5 as well. So it's centered with its parent. Now for the Y positioning, we're actually going to set it to a negative because we want it to appear above the image button. So we're going to set it to negative 0.55. And now we can see it appears above this image button right here. We can also adjust the background transparency to one because we don't actually want to have any background to this. For the text, we'll currently set this to regular auto clicker off just like that. Then for the text color itself, we also want to set this to the same exact color of red, just like that. We'll also set this to scaled, and we also want to set it to Gotham bold, just like that. Now we probably want there to be a little bit of a stroke on this text, so you guys can adjust it to however much you want. If you want it at like 0.5 or maybe even like 0.6, those both work. Oh, additionally for the label, they have off in all capital letters, so we'll just do it like that. Perfect. Additionally, if we want to test this out to make sure it's working on mobile view, we can go to test, go on device, and now we can see how this would look like on mobile view, which does all look Look scaled, good, and everything else like that. Next, we'll go into the UI list layout and we'll start adjusting some properties inside of here. So for the horizontal alignment, we actually want to set this to centered. For the vertical alignment, we want to set that to bottom because we want them to be aligned down here instead of up at the top. And then for right now, that's actually good. We'll go ahead and rename this image button from image button to regular. And now we've got one of our buns completed. What we'll then do is we'll close that bun and then duplicate it. And we'll rename this from regular to fast. And we'll also adjust the UI list layout. Instead of the fill direction being vertical, we actually want it to be horizontal. And now we can adjust the path padding a little bit as well. We probably want it to be scaled maybe 0.1. We'll readjust the padding when we have all three buns placed down. Now for the fast, all we really have to do is adjust the text label. So instead of saying regular auto clicker, we'll say fast auto clicker. Then we'll duplicate these buns one more time and we'll rename the one in the middle from fast to click. Then we want to adjust the sizing of this. And we actually want it to be a little bit larger than our other buns. So we're going to set the X scale to 0.35. And for the Y, it's actually going to be one because we want it to be the entire height of the frame. Then we also want to adjust the background color as well. And we want that to be a blue. And since we adjusted the background color, we also have to adjust the UI stroke. So we'll grab that blue right there and make it a little bit darker, just like that. Then for this label, instead of the text being like this, the text should actually say click button and the text color should actually be in white, just like that. And now it depends on how you want to, but I think what we'll actually do is for this text label, we're going to shrink it just a little bit so that it appears closer to this button right here. And it really doesn't need to be too much 
taller neither. So I think that does look better. Now again, with the UI list layout, we can adjust the padding a little bit more. If we want the buttons to not be at space as much, we could set this to maybe like 0 0.075 so that they're a little bit closer. If you want to appear even closer, you could also do that as well. Maybe set to 0 0.05. And I think that actually looks pretty perfect. Then let's just make sure that we set the background transparency to one so that we don't actually see the background transparency of the frame. And now we have all of our buttons and they actually look pretty good and perfectly fine. The final thing that we should do is go ahead and select our frame, go to our plugins, and we're going to use our auto scale light plugin to add a constraint to this. So the frame looks good no matter what device we're using it on. And one more time, we'll check how this looks on a mobile device and we can see it looks as it should, which is good. Anyways, with all that being said, we now have the buns created. In the next episode, we'll of course be scripting those buns so they actually have some functionality to them. As always, if you guys did enjoy the video or it did help you guys out, make sure you smash the like button, also the subscribe button, and turn post notifications on if you want to get notified we'll upload more Roblox moment content. Finally, I have a Patreon if you guys like to support me and gain access to all the scripts and the game file that I made during this episode. There's a link down below in the description and you guys can go and check that out. With that being said, I'll see you guys in the next episode.